Hi, y'all. How are you? Hi, Richard. I'm very well under the circumstances. Uh, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult time for everybody, but I really appreciate you joining us uh, joining us today on B4 Live. So just to give everybody a bit of background, uh, Yarl Seven is the MD of Owen Mumford. Uh, they're based, in, well, they have headquarters in Woodstock, um, employ over 700 um, staff uh, across two sites in Woodstock and Chipping Norton, and they're a manufacturer of medical devices uh, established nearly 70 years ago. So, um, so Yarl... Personal um, point of view for, for you, how, how have you um, been finding the, the lockdown period and in, in your working, sort of personal working habits? Well, it, it's been very different from what I expected. Uh, when it, the news first broke earlier this year and we were talking about lockdown and reduced activities, I thought it would be a time to, uh, to do all the things that you thought you'd never get time to, but now, unfortunately, you would have the time. It's been quite the reverse. I've never been busier. Uh, and I think that goes for just about everybody engaged in the company. We have never been busier, even though most of us are working from home in the offices. Our factory, fortunately, is, is very much running at full capacity. Uh, but as a company, everyone is firing on all cylinders. Never been busier. Um, w- when we spoke to you before for B4 magazine, you, you've you've um, you've always maintained a, a new um, product every every month. And talking off camera before you, we, we started recording, you were saying you've managed to maintain that and take on um, all the additional work that you're doing, which obviously explains why you're you're busier than ever. Yeah, I mean, business as usual really has been incredible. I didn't think we could maintain it. And we're now into our third month, uh, well, certainly into 45 days since the official lockdown. And uh, and, and and everything is running as, as, as normal. We are continuing with our objective of uh, creating new globally patentable inventions. Uh, the task is to create one new invention every 30 days. And that very much uh, is, is, is happening. In fact, probably more than that on average at the moment. As circumstances is driving all sorts of exciting uh, technological behavior in the company, looking for solutions that we didn't think we'd be looking at at this stage. I mean, I mean logistically, I mean, if you were told you'd have to, and I appreciate for what you do, the majority of your staff have to be on site. Um, but for, for many businesses like ours, I mean, we, we can just pack up a Mac or laptop and go and work from home quite happily and, and connect. But for you to be told or to have to adapt to the new working um, environment, if you were told, okay, yeah, you've got time to adapt to this rather than being forced to adapt to it, what would the timescales have been like? I'm, I'm really interested to find that out from someone that employs as many people as you do. Now, given in a normal world, how, long, how much time would you think you would have needed to adapt to these circumstances? Genuinely, I think it'll take months, if not a year, mm. to, to set up all the VPN connections one by one, to, to create the work patterns and, and the management structure to manage people who work from home. Managing people when you can't see them is a very different skill than seeing them sitting in the office outside your window. Uh, so there's all sorts of new work practices that had to be rolled out immediately. And the IT department in particular were fantastic in getting literally over 150 people connected from home within 48, 72 hours. And uh, that's one heck of a feat. Incredible. Yeah, I mean, I, that, I mean, that just puts it into perspective. You're saying you know, months, if not a year, to, to actually do what you've done in, in, in a heartbeat is incredible. And, and again, you, you, you've referenced staff a few times. And obviously, I think you were saying just now that you've got over 300 staff on site now. Obviously, without them, there's, none of this would have been possible. Absolutely. And, and one has to take one's hat off to them because they are the engine that, that just keeps on running uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week throughout the year. Um, when this all started, we categorized all members of staff. We call them associates. All our associates were categorized as either Group A, Group B or Group C. Group C are the ones who can work from home with immediate effect, like salespeople. Uh, group B are the ones who can work from home but will need periodic access to work, uh, people like our designers. Uh, group A are the ones who can only work on site, and that's typically our production people, our facilities people, uh, our quality people, and so on. And those Group A workers are the ones who really have made a, a world of difference here and, and kept the business going literally without missing a beat throughout the last 45 days onwards. 
And, and has there been a really positive, I just imagine there's had, there must have been a, a really positive collective spirit of everybody working together. Have you seen different sides of people that you didn't see before, learnt more about your staff than you've ever learned before? Uh, certainly, the, the, it's brought out properly the best in people throughout the organisation. We have all sort of pulled together in a way that, again, we would have talked about for years, quite, quite frankly, and put it up there as an ambition and, and an ideal uh, situation. But this, these circumstances have created an environment that overnight have actually changed behaviours in a way that, as a manager, I could only have dreamt of. Uh, it's a true team spirit. There are uh, complexities. There are communication mm. issues. There are, uh, you know, not being on site and being together. Things can fall between two chairs, but the time with which we pick them up and fix them uh, is, is something that we've never been able to do uh, in a normal working environment. So I'm immensely proud of what we're achieving at the moment and the team who are, are making it happen. And I, I suppose the, the, the challenge for you is, is that sustainable, really? And, and um, how, how much you can expect to keep getting that tune out of the team um, uh, in, into the future? I think, I think that is going to be the key task now. How much of this can be turned into business as normal going forward? And how much do we need to manage back into a normal working environment again? And what are the unforeseen consequences of doing that? It, it's going to take up a, a lot of our considerations as we go forward and managing the potential, I hope, inevitable unlocking down of, of, of our situation. Um, a lot of people will have been affected in different ways, although the team spirit is very evident and the output from the company is very evident. What is less evident and what hides behind that are people's personal experiences because everybody will have been affected by this directly or indirectly. And the type of working and the environment in which you work, it can put stresses on one. You know, people in some areas are very concerned about coming to work or going to the supermarket. And people are very concerned about this virus. And we need to recognize that and, and, and handle that with care and make sure we give our associates all the support that they need. And, and it's come up before in a couple of webinars that we've had, not seeing, and you referenced it before, not seeing some of your staff face to face. It's all very easy to log on to a webinar to a, or a team meeting and not see sort of behind their eyes and really how they're how they're potentially struggling to cope with this situation we turn on a meeting we turn it off and hope everybody's okay but obviously there's a lot of in the emotion that you can't detect or concern or fear or whatever it is um that you would otherwise be able to do so face to face so that's it that's another area of, of of worry i suppose for you i should imagine well, it is, and, and Zoom meetings and Teams meetings and these other vehicles for having virtual meetings are really effective, perhaps almost too effective because you tend to log on, you have the agenda, people make their point, and you move on. When you're in a physical meeting environment, there's a lot of chatter, there's a lot of in-between bits, there's a lot of, uh, quite frankly, mickey-taking and, and uh, you know, joyous things mixed with a serious thing. It's quite hard to do that in a virtual meeting. And that does mean the softer parts of, of interaction between teams is gone. And that bit is something we need to try and find a way of nurturing. And, and that's one of the tasks that we have before us going forward. And, and obviously, I mean, you, you mentioned that it's business as usual to a certain extent, but you know, um, COVID-19 has, has presented you with... Um, additional challenges, opportunities, if you call it opportunities, but obviously there's you know, an increase in workload has, has, has come due to COVID-19. So how, how have you um, reacted? Well, we, um, when the situation arose, we, we immediately asked ourselves, well, what can we do, uh, not only as a company, but as, as, a, as a part of our community, both locally and nationally, what can we do with the resources we have available to us? And we decided to spring into action immediately with three or four different things. One, uh, and this is not known to many people, uh, is that we used to make ventilators as a company uh, many, many years ago. And uh, we actually dusted off our old original ventilators and reverse engineered it to bring up today's standards. That ventilator um, is not necessarily suitable for an IT, uh, ICU uh, environment, but it is suitable in other parts of the, the hospital. There are now plenty of ventilators in the UK system, but we are looking at using our original ventilator system potentially for more needy parts of the world going forward. Africa potentially is, is the big next area that will be facing problems relating to COVID-19. The other part is, of course, the um, antibody test kits where you need to have a blood sample 
Now, that's, that's what we do for a living. We make finger prickers that get blood out of the finger. And here, um, we have been working with all sorts of laboratories throughout the world, but in particular here in the UK, who are developing antibody test kits to see if you have had it, not if you got it, but if you have had it, which is something the whole population will probably need to know at some stage. And here, we supplied millions and millions of additional finger prickers and safety lancets. To, to support those kids. And then finally, the, there's been the extraordinary demand from normal hospitals. When the Nightingale hospitals were set up, they came to us and asked for 10 million safety lancets, finger prickers. And we were able to supply that within 30 days uh, to f- fulfill the needs of the Nightingale hospitals throughout the country. So there's been all sorts of pulls on our resources. And, and of course, we, we've been delighted to play a small part in making a difference uh, around the industry to support um, against the COVID-19 virus. I mean, I stopped short of saying, you know, what are your major successes? I know you obviously uh, achievements and, and the manage- way you've been able to manage the staff and rally the team and, 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 and um, come up to the, to the mark on, on the requirements that you've been set. What, what, what are you proudest of or what would you say your biggest achievements have been? I think the, the ability to be super flexible in what is a highly regulated industry, we, we have got into a momentum where we know to make any changes takes a long time. And with that same attitude of we must be compliant, we actually found ways of being super flexible, and super fast in, in meeting demands that none of us could have predicted. And that flexibility and willingness of everybody from our quality and regulatory staff to our production people, to our technicians in research and development. Throughout the piece, people really have been willing and wanting to pull in the same direction and make things happen in a positive way. So that's the bit that makes me proud that on the sixpence we've been able to turn and we've come up with very tangible uh, contributions. And looking to the future, for the business, do you see what's happened over the past um, couple of months um, as helping your business moving forward and, and continuing to be agile and flexible? Or do you think it might revert to how it was beforehand? I think two or three things are going to come out of this uh, that will affect us as a business. First of all, working habits and working environments, I think, will almost certainly change. I have not been a fan of home working. I, I, I'm, I'm yeah, I haven't had great experience of it. However, the last couple of months have shown me that home working has been hugely effective uh, for our organization. It really has been super effective. So that has changed my mind. How we use that going forward, I'm not sure, but I expect our need for office space in the medium term is going to fall away quite a bit. Um, the other thing that's going to change, I think, is more on a macro scale or, on, or national level, and that is where people source their materials. I think the whole supply chain is going to come up for question. I think there's going to be political questions asked, and you know we should have more capabilities within our own borders. That will last a while, but then I think things will settle down into you know, where, where we're going to get the best bang for our buck eventually again. But there will be a period where people will question their supply chain and we could be affected both positively and negatively in that sense. There might be a bigger push to buy British, which is great if you're in Britain. Equally, for French, German, American, and Malaysian operations, they may also have an increased focus on, on domestic sourcing. So there could be pluses and minuses in that, but mm-hmm. I think shortening supply chains is going to be another one. And before we, we, um, we went live, Jan, I was saying... Um, you personally, obviously, you spend a lot of a lot of your time globe trotting, and, and how's your body sort of rebelled against you staying um, staying local? And, and do you see that also in terms of you, know, you referenced the sales team earlier, going off to conferences and and, and those sorts of um, uh, trips? Do you see them um, being more limited in the future, or do you see that reverting to to normal again? I think there will definitely be a reduction in, in travel. I think uh, the idea of, of uh, monthly visits or quarterly visits and, and sales meetings with customers face-to-face, we have all become adept at using Zoom and Teams and other vehicles like that. And I think 
big, bigger customers will see the attraction of talking to their suppliers through this sort of medium rather than face to face. And uh, we are even doing virtual audits. You know, auditors are doing the audit of our factory virtually and not being on site. There's so many advantages. And I, as an employer, am looking at my travel budget thinking, you know what? I reckon we could probably slash this dramatically in the coming years. And it's not just the cost of the travel. It's the opportunity cost of key people being out of the business when they are traveling. And I think there is definitely going to be a change and, and uh, not so good for the travel companies, but I think local companies will benefit from that in the, in the, in the final straw. Yeah, you've always, um, as a firm, uh, Mumford has always been a fantastic supporter of uh, local community, charitable initiatives, etc. Uh, is there anything in particular that the business has, has focused its attention on in, this, in the past couple of months? Well, we continue to engage with our, our, our local partners like Chipping Norton Theatre and, and, and other uh, uh, organisations such as that. But in addition to that, we have uh, been involved uh, in various new charities that have sprung up as a direct need coming out of the COVID-19 situation, including the Help Hub, <coughs> which was uh, established by uh, Ruth Challoner here in Woodstock for local uh, people's need uh, if they needed to have a chat with a psychotherapist or another professional uh, to, to make sure that the mental health uh, was, was being addressed in a positive way. And Ruth's charity has really taken off tremendously and Blenheim Palace themselves have also been involved in that. And uh, we donated and, and helped support the startup of it. And uh, I'm delighted to say that uh, Ruth now has over 800 uh, psychotherapist on her books, uh, supporting people throughout the country. And it really has highlighted a need that perhaps is a little bit under the radar uh, while uh, everything else is going on in our daily lives. In addition to that, we are present in different parts of the world and we try to help our community where we are. And in America, Georgia at one stage was the second highest incidence of COVID-19 cases in America after New York. So Georgia, Atlanta is specifically, <coughs> Atlanta where we are based, um, we decided to contribute half a million safety lancets to the Georgia Emergency uh, Governors Fund. And um, I think that, that was partly to say thank you for all the support we've had from our community over there over the 27 years we've been in America, but also to help support them in need when they were gearing up their capacity to, to deal with patients, uh, which were overwhelming parts of their uh, healthcare system. Incredible. Sounds, uh, sounds wonderful. Um, <laughs> what you've been doing locally and internationally as well and uh, not quite sure how you're finding the time to do all these things but it's, um, it's, it's incredible what you've achieved as a, as a company manufacturing wise and also um, supporting the local communities you, you operate and work in so congratulations and great to see you and I really appreciate your time Yal at such a busy time our best wishes to you and, and all the team at Owen Mumford and we hope to see you soon Indeed, thank you Richard, always a pleasure